Sha. My name is Alexander Osei from Ghana. Okay. Today we are going to look at principles of macroeconomics, national income determination, lesson number three on consumption function. Consumption function. Now, basically, when we talk about consumption, we are talking about the how income is being spent on consumable goods. How income is being spent on consumable goods. Right? Good. And we are saying that if income is being spent on consumable goods, then when income goes up, our consumption is going to go up, it's going to rise. At the same time, this one is disposable income. Disposable income is the money or the income that is ready in the pocket of the household to be disposed of at his own wealth or at her own wealth, right? Good. So, if I use income, because I don't want to use disposable income that or um, very often, I will restrict myself to the income. How it makes sense? But if I mention an income at the back of your mind, how it that it also applies to the disposable income. Good. So we are saying that when income increases, disposable income also uh, consumption also will increase. When disposable income increases, consumption also will increase. So we can conclude by saying that they have there is a direct relationship between income and consumption. There is a direct relationship between income and consumption, disposable income and consumption, right? Good. If income also increases, savings also will increase. If income is whether income increases, savings will increase. Because when I get more income, I'll consume more. When I get more income, I'll save more. How it makes sense too. So we are saying that savings also has a direct relationship with income or disposable income. Good. Now, but when we come to the relationship between consumption and savings, when we are consuming more, when the household is using much of it or spending much of its income or disposable income on consumable goods, it means that they are going to save less. So the more we consume, the lower we save. How it makes sense? And the, 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 the lesser we consume, the more we save. How it makes sense? Good. So that's how it is. We have inverse relationship. So over here, there is an inverse relationship. Invest relationship between consumption and savings. From there, let's come to the consumption function. They say the function is a mathematical expression of, um, um, of economic theory. It is a mathematical expression or representation of economic theory. Now we are saying that the consumption is equal to A plus BY. Consumption is equal to A plus BY. Consumption is equal to A plus BY. Is by whereby it is income, and it is by whereby it is disposable income. Right? Good. So that is basically the, the function for consumption. All right. Next one. All right. Now, from here, we have understood the function, the consumption function, right? But don't be confused. This is. The same as the equation of a line, as we all know from junior high school and senior high school. Look at this. Because the consumption curve is linear, it's a line. So when the function of a consumption follows the line formula or equation of a line, which is equal to y equals to mx plus c. Can you see it? This y is c. Can you see it? This M is B. Can you see it? Right? And this C. Okay, let me write it like this so that you can see it well. C plus MX. Right? So that this one is this. Can you see it? M is B. And X is Y. So the consumption function, because it is linear, it follows the equation of a line. So don't be confused. In our next lesson, I'm going to explain the, the individual item the formula on you. So watch out for our next lecture. Thank you. Once again, my name is Alexander Osei from Ghana. Bye-bye.